Thomas Matthew Crooks opened fire from the rooftop, firing three initial shots. The first shot grazed Donald Trump's ear, followed by five more shots. This pattern suggests that the initial shots were more precise, while the subsequent ones were more desperate. In total, there were several fatalities and injuries among the crowd, adding a layer of gravity to the situation and reinforcing the idea that the later shots were more chaotic and less controlled. The Secret Service and sniper teams were stationed in strategic positions. However, it seems they were unable to respond effectively to Thomas from their positions due to the cover provided by trees and the structure of the rooftop. This raises the question of whether Thomas knew in advance that he would be in a zone where they couldn't respond to him or if he had help from someone. If Thomas acted alone, it appears he knew the rooftop would be clear and that the snipers wouldn't be able to respond from their positions. This prior knowledge is very suspicious and raises the possibility that he had insider information. Now, let's enter the realm of conspiracy. Consider the scenario. A professional sniper positions himself inside the building, using one of the many strategic windows or openings. These professional shooters would have had a clear and direct view of Donald Trump, enabling them to make the initial shots with great precision. Once these initial shots were made, they quickly retreated, knowing that Thomas would take over, firing more erratic shots to create the necessary chaos to cover their retreat. The building's structure supports this theory. With multiple exits and passages, a team of snipers could enter and exit undetected, blending in with the building staff or simply escaping through the numerous exits. The tall, narrow windows offer an ideal view for a sniper while keeping them hidden from the outside, providing a perfect angle for the shots without exposing themselves. Additionally, the fact that Thomas didn't shoot from the most obvious position but moved diagonally suggests that someone advised him that this was the best position to avoid being taken down. It's possible he was in contact with someone inside the building who gave him instructions on where to position himself and when to open fire. All this suggests coordination that goes beyond a lone attacker. In this way, Thomas could have been manipulated or used as a scapegoat by a more professional and organized team. This incident raises serious doubts about the official version. The presence of multiple snipers, the precision of the initial shots, and the lack of effective response from the Secret Service suggest meticulous planning behind the assassination attempt. Was Thomas simply a pawn in a much larger game? The questions persist, and every detail seems to point towards a more complex and coordinated plot than has been publicly presented so far.